Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again standing before my newly acquired 10 inch South Bend lathe and I've been making a series of improvements and uh, documenting some of them here on YouTube but one of the other things that is bugging the heck out of me since I got it is this little guard here. This is an aluminum guard and what that does is it covers up the uh, area here where the uh, bull pin is. Keep your fingers out of there. It keeps the chips out of there as well. But this is cast aluminum and at one time it was broken and it's been welded and not a bad repair but I'm going to give myself a try here on molding and casting a new one. So I will take this off with this single screw here and we'll take it down to the bench and see what we need to do in preparation for making a new casting. Now let's take a good look at this casting. It appears to be a flat back casting. It would be very easy to make a mold of but in fact it's got a bit of a hollow on it and it's a very what we call irregular parting line. Now I've done videos before on irregular parting lines so you can refer to that but I'm attempting to make a casting from a casting rather than a casting from a pattern. So I'm going to do a little work on this and then uh, there will be quite a bit of spooning the sand mold when I uh, get that uh, into the uh, mold stage. Now when they made these originally they probably had ten or more on a match plate with a follow block that would accommodate all of this uh, uh, irregularity here on the back. But what I want to do before I make the casting is we got a weld here and we got a low spot here so I'm going to put a little body putty there. I'm going to fill this up a little bit and then all of the smoothing down will be done on the final casting rather than on uh, this uh, particular casting and they've filed this down a little bit on the back side looks like with a rotary file and I'm just going to leave that the way it is even on the uh, final pattern. Now there isn't a whole lot of draft on this pattern. Now draft means uh, taper. For instance right here there's no taper at all. Matter of fact there's negative draft or negative taper which is going to be problematic. So I'm going to fill this with body putty, sand it down. Now the hole is a problem because the sand will get cut in the hole. So I've already taken a little piece of uh, quarter inch diameter aluminum and I put a center hole in it and I'm going to fasten that in there so that after I make the casting that doesn't show up too well but there's a, there's a center hole in here and uh, that way I'll know where to drill that hole. It'll be pre-punched so to speak. So let me do a little of that work off camera and I'll come back and talk about it. Now look what I've done so far. I've plugged this hole with aluminum and put a little body putty around there and then on the other side of course it's been center drilled and kind of filled with body putty as well and then down here where the weld was this is just common bondo and I've uh, I've raised the height of this a little bit so that and I'll smooth that out just a little bit with sandpaper not a whole lot because the final contouring done after the casting and I will run my gate into this end here this thicker end and possibly another little gate right here with a, with a sprue or, or maybe on the other side whatever there's room for in the little round flasks that I intended to uh, use and I generally make two of something like this because there's a 50-50 chance that at least one of them isn't going to turn out and when you pour aluminum into real thin uh, shapes like this uh, there's a good chance of something solidifying and, and the metal not going all the way through when you get a short shot so I'll make two as long as I got the metal heated up. Let's go out to the foundry. I've had this McEngelvin molders bench for several years now but I'm not sure I ever made uh, a mold on it uh, for YouTube but there sets the flask and the muller and some of the hand tools so uh, we're gonna move in here and start by ramming up that half of the mold with the pattern. I'm going to place, place the uh, pattern into the flask. Sprinkle some parting compound on it. And I'll sift the sand in with my riddle. The sand has already been prepared in the muller.
all I need to do is cover up the pattern with the fine sand and then I can dump the rest of it in. And now I'm ready to ram it. Now I'll strike it off. And it's ready to flip over. Now I have to do some spooning and tapering it down to the parting line. Now that's going to take a few minutes, so I'll do that off camera, spooning it down a little bit further, patting it, and then uh, putting some more parting compound on it. Okay, it's spooned down. Had some raw sand there, so I had to repart it. I'm going to put my sprue right about here and a riser right about there. So I will mark that so I can remember once I start the other side. Now when I pull that pattern out of there, I do expect some sand to tear out because this is not a tapered pattern and if that happens, I will just repair it after the casting is made by sawing or filing off the extra material. I changed my mind. There's so little room in here that I'm going to just sink one sprue right about there and I've got it marked and then I'll run uh, a gate to one end and a gate to the other end from the sprue. There's plenty of parting sand in there, so it's just a, just a repeat of the other side. I will ram this and strike it off. If casting and molding interests you, I have many other videos uh, on the subject, so that's why I'm not covering all of the aspects of this. But now I'm going to put my sprue in there. And I've got it marked here how deep I want to go. I'll use my thumb as a gauge. This is tapered. I just make that into a bit of a funnel on the top so it's easier to get the metal into the hole. Now I will separate the two halves of the flask. Now I have some more work to do on this half and as I pull that casting out of there it's uh, I know it's going to tear some of the sand but I'll run the gates first with the spoon. That's what the gates look like and I dug some extra little holes here so I can get my fingers in to try to draw the pattern and I wrapped the pattern a couple times to try to loosen it but it's not going to be easy getting it out of there. A little easier than I thought. Now I got a little bit of repair work to do. Blow it out and close the two halves. 
it's looking pretty good. I dumped it upside down to get the excess sand out and I'll give it a good blow with the bellows as well. Any particles of sand that fall in there result in a little cavity in the mold. Might be small, might be large. Take a close look. This is really what you'd call a negative. And we're going to make a positive when we pour the metal in. This is the other half. Alright, I'll close it and it's ready to pour. I hope. I made a second mold in this little uh, rectangular flask. I almost forgot that I had it. So now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, get the furnace ready and make the pour. I'm outside now because this is a fair weather foundry. And the furnace is fired up. You notice it's on a mobile stand. Natural gas fired. Electric blower. There's the two molds, along with an ingot mold for the excess, ready to pour as soon as the metal comes up to temperature. And now for the pour, and the metal is about 1300 degrees. Now in a few minutes we'll break them out and see if we succeeded. All right, let's take a look at the one in the square rectangular flask. Looks pretty good. Looks like it's been welded. Still hot. Now that'll all be filed off. And here's where we had some fall in. That'll all be uh, sawed and filed off. Now let's look at the other one. Now let's open the round flask. Well, I believe I got two pretty nice castings here. But I'm going to concentrate on cleaning up this one because it looks like there's less to clean up and file compared to this one. And this will get cut off, filed, this will get cut off. We'll drill that hole. You know, this is a very delicate casting. I can see why the original broke. It's, there's just not too much of it. You know, you could just snap that like a twig. They should have made it a little thicker. I'm wondering if the originals and the older models were made of cast iron and at some point they switched to aluminum and it just isn't quite strong enough. But over I go to the bandsaw with this one. It's starting to shape up. That's what it looks like after the preliminary sawing. Now to the belt sander I go. That's about 10 minutes of filing and that's all I want to do. I don't like that little spot but that's a low spot. I'm afraid I might thin it out too much and make it uh, weak. But all the rest is uh, cleaned up pretty good for a casting. Now I'll drill that hole. Quarter inch hole or one size over. Just a clearance hole.
there it is. Now out to the south bend we go and see how the fit is. Now remember when you make a uh, casting from a casting this is going to be a little smaller because of the rate that aluminum shrinks. So this casting is now oh I'm guessing five six seven percent smaller shorter in every dimension than this one because of shrinkage but on a casting like a guard like this I'm sure there will be no importance to that. Ta-da! There it is ladies and gentlemen. Fits perfectly. I really would like a shoulder bolt right here rather than a round head uh, machine screw and I think I if I don't have a shoulder bolt I'll probably uh, put some Loctite on that bolt and, and maybe a little uh, Belleville washer so it uh, it comes up kind of snug and will stay in place and not drop. But the fit is very good. This is about three hours worth of work in all. Probably more than what it's worth. It needs a coat of South Bend paint. It's not going to get it because it would look just as out of place now with a, with a coat of paint as it does uh, in fresh aluminum. But that's, uh, that's it, uh, guys and gals. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.